Hi, this is Barbara again, and I can't believe another week has gone by since I made the last Facebook Live. Um, I'm really getting to enjoy talking to all of you about the speaking system, and I really uh, love to talk about it because when I tell people some of the things that I've learned about the speaking system, they really open their eyes and they're so like shocked. You know, I never thought of it that way. And yeah, that makes so much sense. So I really love for people to see that there's another way to be looking at things. And hygiene. Um, I, we, so far, one of the parts we've discussed, uh, well, we talked about the attention and where you put your attention, and we talked about language developing, and that attention shouldn't be on the word you're going to say, but just on the ideas that you're, uh, that they're in your head the reason why you're speaking at all and uh, then we discussed the voice last week and that has a very special role in speaking so today we're going to discuss the mouth and you know I'm saying we discussed this and we discussed that it's really so hard just to discuss one part because this really is a system and when you try to separate it it's hard it's sort of like artificial because everything works together and you know how systems are that if one thing goes wrong with the system it can affect other things so it's really kind of hard to separate them hi elizabeth Nice to see you here. And uh, so, but I, I have to sort of separate it because I want to explain things that I've learned about each part. And I think that's, you know, it's harder to understand it if you talk about everything all at the same time. So today we're really going to Think about the mouth and what role does our mouth have in speaking? And if you want to write down, those of you who are here now, what do you, if somebody's going to ask you, what do you speak with? What would you say? Hi, Arthur. Nice to see you. Why don't you guys write down what you think we speak with? And you know, if I ask people who don't stutter, they'll probably say the same thing. And I haven't seen yet the comments, but um, most people say your mouth. You speak with your mouth, because that's the only thing we really see, right? And when I'm talking, do you see my vocal cords vibrating? Nah. Unfortunately, we didn't get a little window in there that we can see through and see what's going on inside. Um, also, we can't see the language development area of the brain. Um, so the thing that we can see the best is the mouth. And that's why people think that the mouth is the tool for talking. But it's really, really, in a way, secondary to the voice. Well, it is secondary to the voice, definitely. Um, because when you speak, you have to produce vibrations. And then the, vo the mouth just shapes these vibrations, which is the voice. So it's sort of like, I, love, I always think of uh, a Play-Doh factory or, or maybe your mother making sugar cookies. Um, and she had that, that, uh, that thing, that apparatus, this little instrument there that you put the dough in and the dough goes and goes through the little mouth of, and comes out in the shape of a star or a bell or something like that. 
Well, that's how it is. We have the voice, and the voice goes through the opening and comes out in a shape. And those shapes make our speech sounds. But how do we do that? Where does it come from? Wow, this is something that is so amazing because you know where it comes from? It's subconscious. We don't think about it. As a person speaks, it just happens. And as I'm speaking to you now, I'm not thinking what to do with my mouth. I don't even know where my mouth is going. I don't have a clue. And you know, it, um, it, it's so amazing because people are speaking and if we smile, we can still pronounce whatever we wanted to pronounce. And if we're frowning or pouting, we can't even, I mean, you can speak clearly with hardly even the mouth moving. We have ventriloquists who speak clearly, and their mouth doesn't move at all. They, I guess they have special techniques but to make certain sounds, but uh, they, like maybe they can use their tongue instead of their lips to make a certain sound. Uh, for any of you out there are ventriloquists, maybe you can say what you do. But, uh, but they really, you can speak really clearly with very, very minimalistic movements of the mouth. So the mouth is really secondary to the voice. And um, this is something that people really are not aware of. So if you're a person who stutters and you're listening to this, think for a minute. When you go to speak, are you afraid you can't say those speech sounds or those or the combination, or the placement of the sound in the word, or the word itself, is hard to say. Is that what you think? Probably, because I think most people who stutter believe that they have certain sounds that are hard for them to say. But, what happens when you sing? You say the same sounds, maybe, in the same words, and hey, no stuttering. If there were a problem in saying these sounds and saying these words, you would have it all the time. Like a person who has articulation problems. But you don't. Because basically, you really can say all the sounds and all the words. You say them in your head and don't have any problem saying them silently to yourself, right? Okay, so what's the difference with singing and with speaking? Well, in singing, the voice is the, the essence of what you're doing. So your voice does come first and your mouth is secondary to your voice. But in stuttering, very often the, the movements of the mouth are really primary in the person's intent and in the person's attention. All the attention is on the mouth. And it's like you have to get the words out through your mouth. But really, is it words that are coming out through your mouth? No, it's really your voice that's making vibrations and the vibrations travel through the vocal tract, through, through your mouth and your nasal cavity, and they become shaped just by movement. So all it is is really movement. So if you look at me now, and my mouth is moving and really pretty fast. You know, the, the mouth moves, you can say, I've, I, I haven't been able to count it, but they say that you can say, put your mouth in about 15 to 20 different places in a second. So, 
that's pretty hard to even count, let alone think of where to put your mouth. So you, it really has to work automatically. And this is a big, big issue in stuttering, is that people who stutter are trying to form the words with their mouth and using the mouth in a controlled way. And this is, is really a problem because there is a connection between the mouth and the voice. It's a real neurological connection. And what happens is, for instance, when we swallow and we want to close those vocal cords, that's what we do when we swallow is we close the vocal cords. I just did it now. And um, how do we do that? Well, what we do subconsciously, of course, is we press our tongue up against the roof of the mouth or possibly even sometimes some people push it forward, which isn't the best way to do it. And sometimes we can press our lips together and then you get a, a, this neuro, neurological reflex that the vocal cords do close and uh, they protect your uh, food from going into your lungs um, by closing. So there is a connection between them. Well, if you're pressing your tongue when you want to speak, the way you press it when you want to swallow, what are you going to do? You're going to end up closing your vocal cords and they're not going to be able to vibrate. So the movement of the tongue, the lips, does affect the ability to produce a voice. And that is really important. So we don't want to be working with the, the mouth in order to speak because this, first of all, it's got to be subconscious. Remember, it goes real fast. Can't control that. Not, can't go that fast. Second, we don't want to use those muscles that are going to set our vocal cords into lock position. And we want the mouth to be free to do whatever it needs to do. Now, you might, there, there's another thing, and I'm getting into some detail here, but I think it's interesting. So I'll tell you a little bit about this. Um, it, there are different kinds of muscles in the tongue and, uh, and the lips. There are those muscles that we can control and ones that we can't control. So uh, when you're working on automatic, you're using those muscles that you can't control and you don't need to. It's the very little movements and it's a different, it's a group of muscles that are not within our ability to really control them. It's the same thing like when you smile, um, you can, uh, you smile and you don't think, oh, I've got to move my, my mouth in that position. It just goes. You want to smile and it goes. Or other expressions as well. Well, uh, the same thing is true when you smile. If you smile on purpose, it's a di you're using different muscles. And your smile looks different too. So it, it becomes like a fake smile, right? When you're trying to control it. So you have to feel the smile from inside to make it look natural. And um, so uh, when you're speaking, you want to use these little uncontrollable muscles that will move automatically and I'll tell you in a minute how they move, but they move automatically. You want to use these muscles rather than using the muscles that you can control. And those are the muscles that move much slower and, and uh, they can press against the mouth and cause that reaction. So you, you really want 
to um, be using a very automatic way of having your mouth move. Now, just saying I'm going to use light contacts, that isn't enough because if you're still using those controlled muscles and trying to control them, you're still going to have an issue because you're not using that group of muscles that just go automatically. Okay? So, how does the mouth know where to go? Well, we have that in our language. Remember we talked about that? I told you it's really hard to separate all these different areas. But we have that in our language in our head. And as the speech sounds come up, the mouth knows where to go. So, it all works very automatically. And it really, you know, I get... Um, I see so many people trying, thinking, what do they do with their mouth? What do they do? How do they move it? I can't say the M sound. And then they try and try to say that sound. And that's when you go into control mode. And, of course, if you're paying attention to the sounds, then you try even harder to say the sound, and then you go into that control mode and then you press your lips and then you lock your vocal cords so we get this whole um, chain effect or of different things that are going wrong in the system and it is so wonderful to look at stuttering as a system issue i can't say it enough when we talk about stuttering and we think of it as a thing and we think it just comes and goes, we're losing track of the fact that stuttering is the way speech might sound or the things that happen when we're using our system in a less effective way. And it's time that we started looking at this as a system and stop thinking that stuttering comes and stuttering goes and, and um, it happens to me when I'm with people and it happens to me when I'm here or, or, or the stuttering came when I was little. It's truly not something that just is there for no reason at all. So stuttering is a system. It's a system issue. And systems are changeable. We can do different things with our, with our speaking system. We can change where our attention is. We can change how we produce the voice. We can change the way the mouth is moving. We can change the thoughts that make us do what we do, too. And, yeah, it's, it, it is a complicated system. I know it is. If it were that easy, people would be changing it one, two, three. And, truthfully, um, you know, I work with people all the time. And I don't work with them just one day or two days. Um, doesn't have to be, you know, a long period of time. Sometimes people come to me for six sessions or 12 sessions or maybe 15 sessions. This isn't something that has to go on and on and on either. But, um, but it, it takes time to see how the system works. And it's not just me saying it to you. It's seeing it in yourself and exploring in yourself and seeing how these things are. And when you see them, then you can change them. It's all really doable. And I would love to talk to you about this. And um, if you are a person who wants to learn about what you can do to change the way your system functions, then you can just click on the link and ask for a session with me free of charge and we can explore 
some of the things that you have been doing and um, see if you are a person who wants to change the way your system functions. Um, so there's more to say about this and I'm going to continue to do Facebook Lives and to educate people because we are in the year 2019 and we don't have to be thinking the way we thought in the past. We don't have to be thinking that there's nothing that can be done if a person stutters. Um, I truly believe that it is for a person, not for other people, that you might want to, to make changes. Um, because there's nothing bad about stuttering as far as you being a person who stutters fine. But if it's hard for you, if it's hard for you to talk, then there might be a reason that you would like to learn to use your system more effectively. So, hi Ed, nice to see you. Um, so, think um, if you are a person who would like to understand more about how your system functions. Do you know how you make your mouth move? Are you aware of what you're doing? These are things that most people don't give thought to or, or awareness of, but it's all really, really very doable. So give it some thought to yourself. Think about how you're doing different things and see if you think that maybe you're putting too much effort in your mouth that your mouth becomes the focus of everything you're doing. If you're a person, Dan, Ed, Elizabeth, everybody who's Arthur, those of you who are on right now, if you want to write down, where do you put your attention when you go to speak? Do you work with your mouth a lot when you go to speak? Are you working on a really automatic mode? It's interesting. It's really, really interesting to look at these issues and to give it some thought because it's really empowering. And to know what you're doing and to see that you can do it differently, that's really, really great to do. So I will be coming back next week for another, I think, on the 6th or something like that. But we'll send a notification out so that you can come on and we can discuss it more. And please put your comments. Tell me in down below what you see, how you feel about it. And do you see it as a system problem? So, very nice to talk to all of you. I hope your weather, wherever you are, is better than where it is here because it's pouring out. But um, have a good day wherever you are and see you soon. Bye.